Okay, hi guys, and welcome to this live stream. Glad to see so many people waiting already in the comment section and in the live chat as well. Uh, this is a fun episode. Hopefully, we'll have a good time. Hopefully, we'll have a couple of decent discussions. And uh, people already know Arnav's been released from jail, and he's he's back. He's back at Republic, doing what he does best. So to help you know, help me dissect uh, Arnab's release a little bit and how people are reacting and how certain people are having a bit of a meltdown after Ar Arnab's release. Help me welcome back to the show, Abhijit Ayer Mitra. Abhijit, welcome back. Om Namah Shivai. Happy Diwali to all our viewers. Oh, yes. Happy Diwali as well. Yahan to abhi, not Diwali yet, but it will be Diwali soon. But happy Choti Diwali to, to all the viewers and happy Diwali in India. So... It's 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 so funny. You know how they say uh, they used to say this thing about like uh, Modi to an extent, and I, I suppose it applies to Arnab to an extent at least now. That anything you try to hit him with, it kind of only makes him stronger. Like every time you try to bring him yeah. down with something, it kind of just ends up making him stronger. And that's exactly what Maharashtra government has done essentially with Arnab Goswami. They said, okay, let's teach this guy a lesson. But what ended up happening is they ended up making like a cult hero out of this guy. Like, look at the way he has been received when he was released. Like, look at this bloody video. Like, there's like people, hundreds of people on the street. And this guy is like chanting Bharat Mata Ki Jai. And, uh, and this is a cult hero. And he went back to the, you know, went back to his studio. He did a show, probably one of the highest rated shows on TV in India at that point. So by trying to shut this guy down, by trying to d destroy his career, by trying to teach him a lesson, you've essentially turned him into a cult hero. Well done. Um, and you know what? Apparently his viewership has also doubled. Well, over yeah. this entire <laughs> and his YouTube channel, the Republic YouTube channel went through the roof. It doubled Dude, its viewers. One lakh people eight. were watching his live stream. Yeah. One lakh people yeah. were watching his live stream. So... He... You know, and now he's starting up channels in every single regional language and a global <laughs> yeah. uh, channel as well. Yeah. And, you know, what these people don't seem to understand is the level of um, uh, the, the way India connects with him. Yeah. You know, it, it's that very dramatic Saspi Kabi Bahuthi kind of uh theater on display yeah. and remember Saas people Kabhi Bahuthi wasn't just watched in India it was watched in Afghanistan and all oh, those yeah. places it became so popular how are you thinking that you are going to bring someone like that down from his pedestal yeah. uh, you know and, and the funny thing was I was talking to a lot of people who were telling me oh this was almost a month two months back and I did not believe them because mm. they went on telling me decision has been taken to go after Arnab, go after Arnab Latita. Oh, wow. And I'm sitting here going, tell me in what part of the political calculus did you think that this was going to help you? <laughs> At first, <laughs> all it could have done was reinforce the uh, uh, voter base, I guess. You know, the, yeah. the hardcore NC, uh, 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 Shiv Sena, INC voter base. But even there, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking what next for the Shiv Sena? Because for yeah. the Shiv Sena, their entire market was the Hindu right. Exactly. If you've gone so far to the left, and I'm using Indian left and Indian right, uh, you know, which in our context means something completely different. But uh, it's... It's I I I can understand uh, Pawar or Sonia Gandhi doing this. I do not get Udhav Thakre doing this. Yeah, I we and we spoke about this last time around, Arnav as well about what is the strategy for what is the long term strategy for Shiv Sena in what they've been trying to do politically. You know, separating with the BJP, fighting with the BJP, and then thirdly, allying themselves with these quote unquote secular forces. Who I was thinking, like if if uh, Balasab Thakre probably knew about this, he would spin so hard in his grave that you could attach a turbine to him and create electricity. And what is the long term strategy here? I don't really understand. It just seems to be ki yar, main baad jaun kursi pe. If I can sit on the kursi once before I die, that's about it. That's all I want. Yeah. 
that's it. Um, I, I'm kind of hoping, see, that's what it seems to appear. And I'm kind of hoping that's not true. Because, you know, mm. that's a very, um, that's not a political calculus. Um, so I really don't know what was behind this. Because uh, if, if that was the calculus, then, you know, five years down the line, you're looking at the uh, only getting invitations to a Hindustan Leadership Summit or some uh, uh, drama bazi something here and there, mm. uh, no longer bar. So yeah. I I don't I mean, it's just political suicide. It really is. I, I can't think of any other way to describe it. Like what happens in the next elections? Like with Shiv Sena, I'm I'm not really entirely sure. I suspect, I suspect, I'm not sure, but I suspect it was going to be something similar to what happened between Nitish and um, the BJP in Bihar, where, you know, Nitish, yeah. uh, the BJP gained a lot of seats. The BJP almost gained the number of seats yeah. that Nitish Kumar lost. Yeah. Um, was it that? I don't know. Also, why is it that, um, you know, I, I, I mean, I've tried gaming this in sort of as many ways as possible yeah. because I wasn't very happy with the Shiv Sena BJP breakup in the first place. Yeah. But uh, I've tried gaming this and it just does not make sense to me. Right. Yeah, I don't really understand it. I don't really understand the game here at all. And I think that the, from what they've done with Arnab and the way Arnab sort of emerged out of it, I think that's a very good... If you think about it, it's a very good lesson for people that always keep talking about jailing stand-up comedians and jailing certain people who say certain things that, you know, people don't seem to like. And that's what I always say to them that, look, man, if you ignore them or if you just troll them back, they'll stay where they are. But if you jail them, if you throw them in jail, if you they're like, if you go and harass them on the street or if you say, oh, Mardalo or beat them up or something like that you will end up making heroes out of people who absolutely don't deserve to be heroes. So I think that should be a lesson for the quote-unquote right-wing in how it's to deal true. with certain personalities. But I also think, think about it this way. You might have made him a hero, but then did you also get the additional votes for yourself? Yeah. Okay. Or did you somehow gain new cadre or reinforce your own cadre? Yeah. And I think for that, you need to look at the Congress. The Congress has a very, very strong cadre. But if you lost your ideology, whatever that means. And, you know, for the Congress, for me, the ideology was always nationalism. Right. Uh, it wasn't secularism. It was nationalism because, you know, the whole history of India, the so-called idea of India that they built up was that we are the successor state. The Mughal Empire was India. Then the British Empire became India. We took over the British Empire. Therefore, we are the successor state. And that was the Congress. That was the Congress narrative. That was the narrative of India. Right. And Rahul Gandhi's moved so far away from that ideology that it doesn't matter how good your cadre is, how yeah. strong your cadre feels, you are still going to go on, end up losing one election after another. I mean, all Rahul Gandhi has to do is to open his mouth and I think for every minute he talks, 15,000 voters switch sides and vote for BJP. Yeah. Um, I told you this, what happened to me, right? I tried, I really tried not voting for the BJP <laughs> last time. And every time my finger went anything in my constituency, it's ADMK. So right. Any time it went anywhere away from the ADMK, I just saw Rahul Gandhi's face. And I <laughs> nope. Uh, no. <laughs> so I did not like the BJP, but BJP is okay. uh, yeah. the story. Right. How, what, what is, um, you know, I would have even accepted that there was some political logic to this. Right. If you see a new ideology emerging in the Shiv Sena or its base, hmm. and you're not, if they think that the New York Times whitewashing your actions, calling you a progressive party, oh my God. overnight, yeah. progressive party. Oh my hey. God. <laughs> and then, Correcting progressive party with opposition party. Right. And this is a correction by the New York Times. Right. Yep. And our, our um, inferiority complex is so great. Did you see the French education minister 
after this Paris beheading and the second, uh, the uh, beheading of the nun, I was it a nun at a church in Nice? Yeah, it was three people after in the that, church. I don't know if it was a nun. I think it brought them. That ridiculous uh, article that came out in uh, AP, uh, was it AP or the Spectator or the New Yorker? I forget now. Saying that militant French secularism is to blame. The oh, French right. education minister actually came and said, said, our problem is all the trash coming out of U.S. universities. We need to crack down on U.S. universities and the garbage that they're producing. Wow. Not oh. one Indian minister will ever have the guts to say that. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. So uh, that said, tell me the ordinary person, the ordinary Marathi voter, Marathi Manus. Yeah. Do you think he gives a shit about what the New York Times said? Or what the Washington yeah. Post said, or what the yeah. Wall Street Journal said, or any of those people said. They don't give a damn. They they don't even understand what progressive is. Right. I mean, heck, I, I would even say that maybe a lot of average Marathi Manus are probably probably even watch Republic. They probably even watch it. They're probably viewers. I'm sure they do. And in fact, yeah. I'm waiting for the Marathi um, Republic to come on. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm excited for Bhojpuri Republic TV. Let's do it. That's going to be fun, man. Yeah, no. I can come to my broken Bhojpuri on Republic <laughs> Bhojpuri. Yeah, finally I can get invited to a news channel. And spoke to people. We're going to do it and we're going to do it. We're going to do it and we're going to do it. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's so funny watching this whole entire thing kind of unfold because uh, the... the you know, this should be this should have been something that okay, you can have disagreements with the way Arnab conducts a show or Arnab talks to certain people, and you can you can have your problems with that. That's completely understandable, in my opinion. But the way you see the, a certain level of like contempt for Arnab Goswami and Republic TV in particular, what he's been able to create with Republic TV from a lot of these Lutians journalists and friends of Lutians journalists, like this should have been. This should have been something that that should have been lauded in media circles. Like this guy has gone away, broken away from the Lutians pack. And he said, you know what? I'm just going to go out of this circle and I'm going to make something of my own. And he's actually been able to do it. Remember, there used to be this case where the Hindu newspaper, they had applied this like strict vegetarian diktat in their canteens where you only you only got vegetarian food. And people couldn't really protest because what are you going to do? Leave Hindu and go where? That was the situation. Yeah. Like, what, where are you going to go if you leave Hindu? Good luck. So you can't really protest against that food. But now here's a guy that said, okay, I don't want to be with the Lutians media anymore. I'm just going to go out of this circle and create something of my own. This should have been a big celebration. But we haven't seen but none of that's, that. But understand, that's why they hate yep. Republic. It shows that you can break their monopoly, go out of the circle, go out of the sleaze, set up your own thing. And not only set up your own thing, you become the most watched English channel within a week of your launch, possibly within yeah. two, three days of your launch. Yep. And then you repeat the success with Hindi. And over a period of a year, you overtake the leader Aj Tak by how much? Like yeah. Aaj Tak now has what half the viewers that Republic TV has or, yep. or something. Same as same as India TV, same as India TV, which used to be right up there. Yeah. So you know you're all losing out. So there's professional jealousy involved. You yep. can couch it in that this is not journalism. Uh, you know, but for me, what Arnab does is exactly he's just more overt at what uh, uh, NDTV does. Right. And in fact, I think he's a lot more honest than what NDTV does. Right. Okay, if you watch Nidhi interview a right a, a right wing person, tell me one interview she's done where she doesn't constantly interrupt the right winger. Yeah. Okay, then there was that program called Left, Right, and Center, where you'll have five people. Only one will be a right winger, the alleged right winger. The remaining four will all be hardcore left, with two conveniently passed off as centrist. Yes. You know, like Mao and Stalin were, you know, centrist yeah, communists. Yeah, they were centrist, actually. And the left will effectively get 40 minutes with 10 minutes to the right. And yeah. even those 10 minutes would be constantly interrupted. <laughs> yeah. You know, Arnab was trained in the crucible of NDTV. He is an NDTV product. 
he knows all their tricks and what they do implicitly he does explicitly yeah so i'm uh, i just and and did you notice when he was in jail they were running this campaign they won some journalism award that i've never heard of they won 11 prizes in some journalism award that i've never heard of in my entire life till now and they were actually right. advertising it left right and center ndtv wins prizes for real journalism no tamasha oh on real journalism right you, dude, that is so what a be that is so like <laughs> that's so sad It's that's actually, sad that's kind of like rana you winning some kind of award like weird award for her book and you're just like well this is this is the real award what other people get is not a real award what we got is it's, a real it, award uh, it's the uh, uh, it's the frizzy hair a journalist of the year award <laughs> journalist it's of the year award a year, uh, year of the uh, award of uh, frizzy hair journalist of the year award oh my god it's higher than pulitzer yeah right so uh, I'm not that the Pulitzer is very good at the moment. If you look at the kind of shit that they're um, uh, awarding, sixteen, nineteen, even there, yeah, yeah, good, yeah, yeah, even uh, even and, there, Pulitzer is in the toilet a little bit. Sixteen, nineteen is proven, yeah, to be, be historical. There is serious historical inaccuracies in there, and it still gets an award. I mean, how amazing is that? you know so let them do it it's just their saw grapes coming out because you know you can claim he um uh fixed the ratings or whatever incidentally there is absolutely no proof he fixed the ratings though there is proof yeah. and findings in certain other tv channels hansa has even come out and filed a case about it saying republic yeah. did not stop pressurizing us to say that they did and uh what happens in this entire sequence is that you've begun to see that his popularity is actually real popularity it's right. not uh if you wanted to prove that he had fixed the trps you've proven the exact opposite <laughs> yeah, that is that's true that's a good not, point right yeah. so now you switch it to suicide and all that crap and yep. now of course there is pathetic attempt to go after his uh, uh advertisers yeah So before I come to the advertisers I, I want to talk about one more thing because you mentioned right that uh, Arnab's from that he's grown up in that or his uh, journalistic education has been in that NDTV setup so he's seen what these people do to their guests and how they treat guests that do not completely agree with their world view and so I I I do think like a lot of people probably see a proxy of themselves in Arnab Goswami in the sense that he is you know he's not someone that agrees with the established world view of liberal media in India uh same as a lot of people in India that do not agree with that and he gets badgered for it same as a regular indian gets badgered for it if he does not completely buy the leftist media world view hook line and sinker and secondly again the indian audience also has grown up watching ndtv and they have seen how these people get invited to ndtv and then they get attacked and their character gets attacked and they get straw man arguments against them ad hominem attacks against them the audience has seen that and now they're just seeing arnab goswami do the opposite you know so in in a way it's it's like a pretty i can imagine watching republic tv and getting a pretty decent amount of catharsis of like decades of just ndtv badgering other people and now you get to do it to them kind of it's it, it's a it, it's catharsis on several different levels first is yeah. the self identification right because most of india is not latians latians is a very very small circle which uh, which is about uh, what uh, approximately 3 and a half to 4 kilometers radius from india gate yep. in delhi and say a few uh, kilometers square out uh, in malabar hills in bombay at best right uh, that can also be described as latians uh, in a sense right. now uh, and maybe antilla in addition to it i don't know where antilla is re- relative to uh, malabar hills but anyway right. uh, and what happens is that everybody lives outside of it and when they see somebody who's not from this mold become mm. something really big it it's aspirational 
This is the yeah. reason Rajnikanth became a huge Tamil film star. He's not very good looking. He's not your typical fair because you know there was obsession with only fair film yeah. heroes. Kamla Hassan was fair, but Rajnikanth always used to thrash his movies left, right, and center. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, there was that. Uh, he couldn't dance properly, and still people loved Rajnikanth. So why was it that? Uh, it's not why it's it's more it's the same phenomenon this identification with the small town boy outside the entire thing making it for himself making it big um you know getting the proverbial girl in this case the prophet so right. to say uh everything so on one level there's that self identification the second is you know the right giving it back to the left in that sense yeah uh which i don't think was that major as the third aspect of what i'm bringing up which mm. arnab has always been quite clear about in private which is that this is meant to be like a gladiatorial sport mm. it is for the same person who identifies with rajnikanth to enjoy the so called intellectual elite yeah getting yelled at getting bloodied in the roman arena having yeah. lions eat his entrails or whatever right because for decades it's been the other way around right exactly yeah. exactly it's it's basically intellectuals coming and being pompous on tv yep and here's this small town boy from guwahati coming and you know giving it back to all these so called intellectuals yourself included <laughs> alleged intellectual that one half paid scientist half paid full a uh, half paid scientist full naxal there you go getting hammered left right and center by this guy yeah feels good it's like yeah. it's almost like you know you went you've been terrorized by this police officer who's been trying to extort bribes from you or whatever for the last 2 3 years he's made your life miserable yeah and somebody equivalent to him is getting bashed up left right and center on tv that's really satisfying right yeah. so it's 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 one of the It, it, it's so many things. Arnab is Arnab is actually a sociological study. It's a distill, it's a condensate, whatever you want to call it, of a mm. lot of the, uh, you know, the small guy versus the big guy. You know, uh, yeah. a phenomenon that exists in India, and you see this in a lot of movie. Uh, Shah Rukh Khan may be big now, but he was almost always that small guy coming from the village, falling in love with the go- gori amir uh, uh, chick, and then you know. Uh, Uh, somehow uh, gori amir chick driving a mercedes falls in love with a basket yeah it's unrealistic but it's true in this case the story of lagan you remember I- lagan where that english girl falls in love with that the amir khan that's lagan oh, yeah, yeah yeah lagan exactly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's like that and it's um i think it's just fascinating it really is fascinating because you remember like how you used to be a few decades ago there used to be more or less jard darshan which was essentially just giving you the news then news turned into something very different with the advent of cnn and then other channels followed in india where news became sort of reporting the news and adding commentary to the news so i will tell you the news then i'll add i'll tell you what to think about the news as well and in india that kind of like giving the news and then commenting on the news became pretty much completely dominated by the left wing so every time you got the news you were getting left wing commentary on the news and you were being told that if you do not agree with these views then you're a racist sexist homophobe all of that fun yeah. stuff yeah. and so there was this area of the market right because the left wing came and dominated the left wing side of the commentary but the other side of the commentary area was completely vacant for a good 20 30 years nobody took that spot and they deliberately left it they said no i don't want to go there i want to be here let that spot be so there's a hole in the market there's a gap in the market and it was just crying out for a guy like arnab to just come and completely dominate that space and it and- took a savvy guy like arnab to just go and do exactly that what's amazing about all of this is that your market was basically 50 shades of ultra left yep <laughs> it was there you could put it between marx or lenin or mao or stalin or che guevara or fidel or hugo chavez right those were your only choices yeah. 
it tells you how much power they had that nobody even dared to tap that huge right wing market right right and the first person to do it to give them credit was times now right, right? they were the first people to move towards that sort of rightist uh, 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 this thing and they could do it because the times group is so huge and they've got multiple interests all over so they can also play this uh, hedging game kind of thing so we should also recognize right. times now which incidentally hasn't lost much market share at all since arnab left they've actually right. doubled the right wing space so times now accounts for about 35 36% of the market yep. uh, republic accounts for about 40% of the market and yep. between these two you've got about 70 to 80% of the market completely sewn up yeah so imagine what does it tell you of the power of the left that they wanted you to believe that only 20% of the market was the market and the remaining 80% should not be catered to yeah they could subvert market forces that was their strength and and look at how resistant to change they are that even now despite ndtv's falling revenues yeah. abysmal revenues they don't enact an editorial change yeah. so there's clearly no Uh, for all they talk about being business friendly they fundamentally don't believe that the product has to suit the market they believe the market has to adjust itself to the product yep. right i just find that really really amazing and you yep. know you uh, nobody is asking you to compromise on your news but fix the panels that you get don't yeah. do this fraud left right and center where the uh, uh, left and center is 90% and the right is 10% <laughs> don't do this fraud where you only get the most uh, idiotic uh, stupid uh, right wing people who can't argue jack shit on yeah. your programs of course now no right wing person even wants to appear on ndtv because it's the uh, uh, spell of death you know ndtv <laughs> is the panotti tv you go on it it's, like, you probably lose it's like it's like what barkha dat is to elections basically uh, pretty much uh yeah. pretty much so uh, uh though i i would say that barkha got infected by ndtv i think ndtv <laughs> is the original uh, um you know uh albatross right but that fine that's you know it's it's ndtv is playing the captain of the titanic the band and the captain of the titanic that when it's going down they're sitting on the uh, uh fore deck and playing Uh, you know god save the queen and rule britannia or whatever what have you right. fine i mean you want to do that go down with the sinking ship go ahead you'll win some third rate prizes on the way <laughs> i'm yeah. sure they would have given some bravery awards to the band on the titanic yeah and look at the level of saltiness as well as so let me let me just share the screen with you for this article this is from the print i don't know why my computer is being really slow but this is an article from the print so basically the article is insinuating that on republic tv you know arnab was everything and uh, arnab has basically cultivated like these this army of mini arnabs and uh, they're all basically the same amount of hatred and even if arnab went away the hatred and the fascism of the republic tv essentially wouldn't go away as well and it's what's really funny to me is that now people are now people are realizing that uh, masala discourse is bad now people are realizing that ad hominem attacks are bad now people are realizing that dishonest journalism is bad nobody no i remember nobody saying it to rajdeep sardesai or like uh, complaining about rajdeep sardesai when he was dancing with this electoral guy after the delhi results were announced look the dancing was the minor bit you remember when he was at cnn ibn they had the tapes of the parliament bribery scandal and they never released those tapes do you remember that entire episode yeah that was yeah so that was the bribery scandal uh, for the um, uh, for what was it when manmohan singh won the confidence motion after the nuclear that's deal that's right that's right and they refused to release the tapes because they didn't believe it or whatever nonsense <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how is that honest journalism exactly? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, give me a break. We all know what uh, when the Radia tapes were about to go uh, live. Uh, you know, uh, Pranoy Roy made calls to everybody saying, "Oh, you 
can't carry this, you can't carry this. He worked the phones overnight to see to it that nobody would carry the radio tapes. Till it became yeah. so big that you couldn't ignore it anymore. Yep. How was that uh, journalism? So I'm I'm sorry, but uh, this doesn't. Uh, uh, the people claiming that they're journalists are basically glorified power pimps who are out of business in the power corridors. Right. Now pretending to have this holier than thou attitude, which is just rubbish. I can also right. tell you that my default news channel uh, that I go to read the news, I don't watch the news, I read, right. is NDTV, which also has a very large viewership. Hmm. Right? Uh, it's got 147 million hits. I think it's the highest website hit count in India of any website at all. Oh, wow. And I'll tell you why, because they curate the news very well. Hmm. Okay. There are always stories. The top 10 stories are usually things I'd always want to click on. Right. And why do I click on it? It's because I don't have to absorb their editorial slant. I just do a speed read or a skim read. Right. And I'm not interested in the shit that they've added to it. Right. And I can just finish off the entire article in about five seconds, not even give them the advertising revenue that would come to them for one minute of being <laughs> on their website and right. get out of it. And the thing yeah. is curated, not from NDTV sources itself. It is curated from agencies like PTI, ANI, Reuters, and la -Di -Da. Yeah. They just do a better job of curation. That's about it. Okay. Uh, and that's all there is. Mm. Remember when that uh, uh, Gunny Sack fellow, what's his name? Gunny Sackerin, uh, a fellow who sp allegedly speaks English, but you need a PhD in Tamil to be able to <laughs> speak, uh, to understand his English. Right. Uh, yes, Arvind Gunny Sackerin. Right. So Arvind Gunny Sackerin, uh, he broke his tooth. They had two hours of programming just for that. You oh know, like my when God. And Jones cries, CNN runs this thing. <laughs> Watch Van Jones's reaction. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's Van Jones crying is the news. The anchor the news. is the news. So I'm just very curious when the Shailaja Bajpai writes that Arnab is the news. Yeah. Tell me, how is that any different from uh, 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 NDTV claiming, uh, making a whole news program about their journalists winning the news, running advertisements about their journalists winning the news? Oh. Because, of course, they don't have advertisement slots to sell. Nobody <laughs> wants to advertise on NDTV. Uh, uh, not having um, uh, running two hours worth of programming on a journalist who broke half a tooth. <laughs> how, uh, how is that uh, whatever? Right. They've also, let's not forget, uh, NDTV, uh, CNN, IBN, all these people under Rajdeep for, for 10 years they consistently ran programming calling Modi a murderer, murderer, this rioter, murderer, fascist, Nazi, whatever. Yeah. They've toned it down now. But I don't think people remember how it was because memory is so short. Yeah. Before 2014, I remember every single news bulletin yeah. had to have something about Modi and every single panel had to have one panelist who would say that he's a murderer or something like that. Yeah. You you know, people tend to forget these things very quickly. Have Has NDTV ever apologized for that shit? No, of course not. Never. Has Rajdeep yeah. ever apologized for that shit? Never. Yeah, so what not. is the big, this thing ki mera journalism, asli journalism hai, tumhara nahi hai. As far as I'm concerned, nobody does old school journalism and that is nothing to do with Arnab. Anyway. It has to do yeah. with the way news reporting has moved on. 24-7 yeah. channels killed it. And then the digital age killed it. Right? Because these days you can verify everybody in the most remote corner of Ladakh could probably have some kind of Twitter account. So, you know, when this yeah. Indian Express story came about of uh, some uh, deep uh, intrusion in uh, Depsang, right. all I had to do was to make a few calls, get the number of the local councillor out there. And yeah. within about uh, 12 or 14 hours, he said, Sir, kuch nahi hai udhar, aap abhi tweet kar dije, main ja ke udhar photo lunga. Okay. Mm. He went and took, uh, his name is uh, Konchok Stenzin, I, uh, Konchok uh, Rinzin or Stenzin, I forget now. Right. But he went there, he took pictures, he put his GPS location on so that he could show me where he was standing. And he took pictures of him at those locations and sent it to me, which I promptly tweeted out. 
right showing that there was absolutely and you can verify this in such a short period of time and yet indian express didn't even allocate the basic resources this cost you nothing mm yet they didn't even want to allocate those resources to do that basic thing that woman on uh, hindu what's her name thakurain who keeps going saying sab main thakur hu main thakur hu mere ko story de dena hai khane ka sawal hai mere ko story de de raha hai main bhi thakur hu teri tarah i can't remember her name now par hai ek i know you're talking about forgettable so yeah so to this xyz uh, lady yeah. uh she's written two complete bullshit stories yeah which anybody at the hindu edit desk should have just been able to buy a 50 dollar satellite imagery and confirm that it was wrong yeah. on both occasions they failed to do it yep so you know you have this thing where i'm sorry but if you're telling me that this is journalism and if this lady is a journalist and she goes around giving certificates to other people being journalist hmm iski to journalist chodo isko to hindu mein waitress hone ki aukat nahi hai no you were talking about you remember you were, you were talking about the whole uh, the kind of allegations that these channels used to make against um, modi and the things that they used to call sort of hindutva people and modi and things like that look at this cartoon this this cartoon has been retweeted by all the big liberal accounts including kunal kamra and so on and so forth and akash banerjee and people like that this is basically comparing what uh, republic tv says to radio rawan ab uh, arnab goswami is essentially calling for genocide that's what yeah. they basically say and this is basically. considered okay like look at this another one this is yeah go ahead this is from uh, another one of these journalists why do right wing supporters keep saying ludicrous things like the game is on what game what is the need for such dramatics in speech it's silly so saying the game is on is considered silly but saying that <laughs> modi is a mass murderer he murdered thousands of muslims himself personally and that hindus are walking around killing muslims and calling Kohlberg. something linchistan yeah. veering That's towards funny. fascism all yeah. of this is legit yeah but the game and, is on is bad is bad yeah right and now it's radio rwanda before it used to be north korean tv yep right I'm I'm just constantly amazed by this. And by the way, North Korean TV was coined by the certain girlfriend of Omar Abdullah, the mm. same man that used the National Security Act to jail more people in Kashmir than any of his predecessors ever had. Yeah. And you'd understand my, my absolute um, mirth hearing that from her. Right. Given her boyfriend was. Uh, every bit the kim jong un if he could uh, uh, minus the ethnic features he was every bit the pocket <laughs> kim jong un that he was yeah. constitutionally allowed to be so yeah. you know this is fun this is fun i think what these people think is that if they can go on it's like maoist sloganeering yeah. you know it's like that 1984 the george orwell the 2 minutes of rage or yeah. what was it 2 seconds of of rage whatever that if you can work everybody up into a frenzy then everybody will start believing you yeah now the problem is you only have 20% of the people who are willing to watch you and even in that 20% about 10 to 11% is india today so you can discount that so it's only the remaining 10% yeah, yeah. um and then there is this thing that uh, the power that still remains is that they still have the norm setting the peer review power that what they say is journalism and therefore all the vernaculars should also keep repeating what they say yeah. for them to get accepted as true journalists yep now that's fine i mean you could do that but the point is if you get accepted as uh, you have two options one is you can make money or b you can get accepted as a true journalist who's going to be like the old notion of you know the scholar professor who begs on the street side kind yep. of thing congratulations <laughs> i certainly hope that happens to you but yeah yeah the level of meltdown at this has been pretty hilarious this is one of my favorite ones which is essentially kunal kamra asking advertisers mm -hmm. to remove their uh, advertising from republic tv 
uh, Raymond, Muthood, Group, Geo, Max Bupa, Kent, Star Health Insurance, Nissan, Dabur, Mahindra, Amazon, Samsung, Sony, Maruti, Nerlak, and Toyota. You're funding an alleged criminal. RT, if you would like these companies to do otherwise. And then on top of that, a third rate copy of an already third rate group called Defund the Hate is saying, thank you, Kunal Kamra, for drawing attention to this. We at Defund the Hate are running regular brand-wise campaigns, facilitating conversations between companies and consumers, urging them to stop advertising in such channels. We all need to come together to defund the hate. Now defund the hate comes around. Now the world needs defund the hate. When Republic TV is in existence, then the world needs... Uh, Ravi so Kumar doesn't need it. Rajdeep doesn't need it. Barkha doesn't need it. None of them need it. So, so let's break this down. Yeah. First, you know, in the other uh, screen that you brought up, uh, yeah. you remember Arnab's pose is uh, is Bal Thakre's pose. That was his favorite pose. You know, he used to stand out in the balcony with his arms stretched like that. Yes. I thought that was brilliant. It was a very suggestive pose. Uh, and uh, let's discuss this tweet. Yeah. Now, Kunal is totally within his rights to call yes. for a boycott. That is his yeah. democratic right, and he's exercising it perfectly okay. But let's see how many people are actually going to start boycotting. Hmm. Now, uh, I can tell you that all my suits are Loro Piano fabric. Hmm. They're bloody expensive. Right. I don't, I won't be caught dead going into a Raymond's showroom. <laughs> but... Right. Most people will be buying Raymond suits. Yeah. And, you know, when they're looking at getting uh, a good suit, do you think they're going to keep, oh, he's advertising at Republic at the back of their mind? <laughs> exactly. It's not going to work. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because in a certain category of suits, you have no alternative to Raymond. Yeah. Muthut, I don't know about Geo. Again, you know, the geo subscriber the consumer base, yep. would be Republic's biggest consumer base, right? Exactly. Uh, I don't know about uh, Max Bupa, uh, Kent again. You know, are, are you actually to, to buy a RO? Hmm. Are you actually going to think, I mean, who buys an RO? Hmm. Uh, on It would mostly be people who don't want to keep spending the money on getting those water canisters home or buying bottles of mineral water and things like that. Long-term savings, whatever, uh, to get your uh, RO done. Now, that would again be Republic's main market. So the, the... assumption in all these things now i can honestly tell you i would wouldn't touch a mahindra with a barge pole ever <laughs> i wouldn't riding a mahindra i would absolutely uh, i might be seen in a nissan but i would never buy a nissan i only buy right. german or british cars by uh, aajkal samsung sony samsung to theek hai but sony maruti, samsung maruti dude samsung. maruti is the is maruti consumers are probably a big maruti uh, consumer, or samsung probably. consumers now samsung consumers will 100% be the largest republic segment yeah because they're the ones who don't find the argument of apple competitive yeah for them it's all about packing in features maximum spec and things like that yep. you tell me in a business sense how does this make sense? Now, let us contrast this with the call to boycott Tanishk. Mm. Right. Now, people like me, we would never buy a jewel set that has been copied or that, that a second version of this exists in the market. Yeah. If I get caught dead with somebody else wearing the same kurta ornament that I did on opera night, yeah. I would die of shame. <laughs> so fancy, okay. dude. Yeah. Uh, I have my own jewelry made by my jeweler. All my mom's jewels are made by our jeweler. Several right. jewelers, in fact. Um, and that's it. Now, the, who are the people who go to Tanishk? Mm. They are the people who fall within a certain price category uh, that are price conscious, that need something on the quick. They're quite happy to go buy something off the shelf. They would yeah. be the main Republic watches. Yep. So, you know, when... There you have a campaign of boycott Tanish. It does actual hard damage. Mm -hmm. That was actually a thought out campaign targeting the segment. And it worked. Yep. (coughs) 
Tanishq immediately, of course, there was also the compound mistake that Tanishq brought out that ad when two Hindu boys had been killed by Muslim, uh, uh, by the relatives of Muslim yeah. girls in the wooing. So it was also uh, completely tone deaf in that sense. But see, boycott Tanishq made economic sense. Hmm. This does not make economic sense. Tell me what bada admi who would actually watch NDTV because NDTV right. would only be watched by the Latins echo chamber. Right. Would think ki, am I using Neralac on my walls or am I going to be using, you know, Asian paints on my yeah. wall? They wouldn't think about these things. They'd say, what the hell, man? That's my for my interior decorator to do. It's not for me to be micromanaging. All and even from the company's point of view, even if you look at it from the company's point of view, companies, they have shown that they do care about woke, but they only care about woke until it affects their bottom line. And once Correct. it starts to affect their bottom line, they don't really care that much. And, and who cares about woke? You'll see that it's all these um, produce in America. Okay? Yep. Uh, it's, uh, it's cereal makers like Kellogg's and shit like that, or it's shoemakers Nike. like Nike, yep. uh, or it's, uh, you know, uh, junk food makers like apple pie uh, toasties yep. and things like that. <laughs> yeah. Now, what is common to all these things is that these are primarily bought by the lowest segments of society out there, junk food, unhealthy junk food with chemicals, sugars, and preservatives. Right. Which or they will be bought by like they be bought by younger people, younger people, urban people that generally lean woke anyway. Who lean woke anyway, but also yeah. a much lower segment. Yeah. Because remember, the real segment would not be seen in Nike shoes. They would yeah. definitely not be eating cereal or a out of the box apple pie. <laughs> they would yeah. eat healthy. They would eat organic. They would go buy or make their own breakfast eggs or whatever and things yeah. like that. So in those cases, it made perfect sense for Nike to get woke. Perfect yeah. sense for Kellogg's to go woke. Yeah. Okay. It does not, or, or Target to go woke. You know, with those uh, same-sex bathrooms or whatever yeah. that they introduced. Uh, because Target, you go when you don't have too much money. Yes. Uh, sorry, what we call Target. target. Uh, uh, but with this, it just doesn't make money. They're not even thinking through their campaigns properly. Now, yeah. if you go to this defund hate, this third-rate copy of a third-rate oh website, God, uh, Twitter handle. Do. What is this? <laughs> Yeah, they're trying to stop hate, apparently. Right. So if you look at this, if you actually go uh, uh, look at uh, Defund the Hate's Twitter handle, mm. facilitating conversations between the companies and consumer, tell mm. me what company has responded to this? any of these uh, jokers? Nobody. Nobody cares. Nobody. Companies don't care. Companies people don't retweet it to feel good about themselves. That's what people do with handles so, like so this. this is problem. This is the problem that sociologists in India do. They transpose a Western model onto the Indian reality that doesn't work. And yeah. all these jokers like defund the hate do the same. Yeah. Right. Or that idiot IS officer who wrote, this was that IS officer, An 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 Ananvia Singh or something like that, who started up this whole, oh, these camp, uh, these advertisers are advertising <laughs> in hate channels kind of thing. Right. Right. Uh, these are the people who take a Western model, superimpose it. And then there was that clown Bajaj boy. Uh, what's his name? What Bajaj? I don't remember. Rahul Bajaj or his son? I forget who daddy Bajaj is and who son Bajaj is. Right. He comes on CNBC and says, you know, we've stopped funding hate channels. Now, I think the shareholders <laughs> of Bajaj need to be seriously worried. You produce cheap yeah. as shit. As in real yeah. shit, which is, it is, isn't even an aspirational product. Yeah, because it's like a given good. Good. It's a bad yeah. It, 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 it's 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 a what you'd call an inferior uh, necessity. Yep. A Giffen good. So you know the thing about Giffen goods that when prices go up, the consumption of Giffen goods go up because uh, it's like very poor quality rice. That when rice prices right. grow up. The uh, people can't afford anything else. They can't afford vegetables, so they buy more of bad rice. Right. Bajaj right. is like that. I mean, have you ever seen anybody said, Main paisa laga ke bajaj 
Kredito. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You belong to the absolute public toilet segment of the consumer market. Yeah. And you don't even understand your own market, boss. Yeah. Well, that should be the, that even should give a lot of people. Even the ordinary person who wants to buy it. Yeah. would say cash mere paas tvs kharidne ka uh, ya honda kharidne ka uh, paisa hota ek hero yeah. honda kharid leta ya ek uh, you know ek uh, uh, vespa kharid leti or whatever par paisa nahi hai to bajaj hi kharid leti hu <laughs> yeah hey right? and this is the market that watches republic yeah i think bajaj shareholders really need to sit down and have a very very serious look at the leadership of that thing because clearly the leadership is endangering their profits the leadership is endangering their market share the leadership is compromising shareholder interests but this is the kind of trash that will get celebrated yep yeah i, I want to take a look at a couple of other meltdowns just really quickly this is one from uh this fellow who's saying oh the people that came to uh greet arna but basically a bot crowd 500000 rupees mein bhade ki bheed khareedi hai so the people that go to so when people go to like arna to receive arna they are a bhade ki bheed they have been bought and sold but i remember when uh, there was a big crowd at tejaswi's functions everybody was saying oh change ki lehar aayi hai change ki lehar aayi hai it's a wave of change and i remember i am from bihar i used to live in patna i remember how these crowds are organized right i used to remember there used to be a line of people walking to gandhi maidan and i used to ask them kahan ja rahe ho so they used to be like gandhi maidan ja rahe hain wahan pe biryani khana phochka sab rakha hua hai hum log ke liye to hum log wahan ke jaate hain thoda der baithte hain khana mil jata hai but see this is we know that most crowds in india are organized crowds right <laughs> now but i don't understand on what basis you determine something is a genuine crowd or an, either they're all organized or they are not all organized you know you can't have this mere dushman ka organized hai mera genuine hai mera genuine hai exactly yeah hey anyway. so it, it's such a it's so stupid it's such a stupid argument that some crowds are bought but the crowds i don't like uh, the crowds i like are bought this is the final one that i wanted to share with you this is from you remember how people keep talking about protecting independent journalism and these these organizations they're always tweeting about like supporting independent journalism i would consider arnab's channel to be one of those independent journalism who's not reliant on any med- lutians media patronage uh, for success but the same people who keep tweeting and talking about supporting independent journalism are now attacking this guy nothing has changed nothing he remains the same megalomaniac and deranged man and it's just so funny to see how angry these people are i enjoy it i enjoy it a lot and i remember also the, none of these people think about this is yeah. that arpa is the one that comes off as obsessive deranged right if you go through a timeline right 50% is muslim ka hatya ho raha hai the remaining 50% is arnab goswami i think she right. genuinely has a secret crush on arnab <laughs> because you know this hatred of arnab it, it's very paradoxical i think right. she's secretly madly in love with arnab but she's also <laughs> confused by hate she's confused by it she yeah can't, that she will never be the marketable commodity that arnab is right. she will never be as successful as arnab it's just that you know that realization of failure right that you've spent all your life without recognition Right. Look, even Rana Ayub with her four journalism is now way ahead of you, Arfa. Tomara journalism ka to market mein bacha, left mein bhi nahi bacha. At least you keep doing the best cheesy hair work. Journalism ka market. So I think she's madly in love with Arnab Goswami. It's that you know the, the desire of what you cannot have. It's the unattainable. It's you know it's like the um, uh, it's like the bhakt wishing for Vishnu. You know because a lot of the Vishnu. Uh, uh uh i uh, adoration poetry right. is you know that of a lover right right and i think it's basically that love turn negative right you know it's it's like that in rand that fountainhead me novel na where she hurts the <laughs> man she loves the most karke usi ki yeah. tarah hai 
मेरे को तो बहुत मजा आ रहा है इन लोगों का टाइमलाइन देख के आई नो आई नो इट इज रियली फन टू वॉच एंड आई ऑलवेज लाइक डूइंग दीस मेल्टन वीडियो सो आई एम ग्लैड आई हैड यू टू शेयर दिस वन विद आई नो यू हैव टू रन आई आई नो यू इन अ बिट ऑफ अ हरी बट वी सो वी हैड अ फ्यू मीम्स दैट आई वांटेड यू टू एक्चुअली रिव्यू बिकॉज़ सम पीपल हैड सेंट मीम्स दैट वर काइंड ऑफ अ लिटिल बिट रिलेटेड टू यू बट what we can do is we can do like a dedicated one if you're free next week i'm going to get kushal on board and you me and kushal can maybe do like a meme review together if you're down for it yeah yeah absolutely man whenever you want all right so uh guys not this week but next week we have a special meme review because we'll have abhijit and kushal and i together we'll do a we'll do a meme review so send us your memes join the subreddit and send us your best abhijit memes and abhijit will review them himself but other than that abhijit thanks a lot for coming on the show today man this was this was fun i really wanted to discuss this with you thanks for having me on man this was just great fun going yeah. and pooping over everybody thank <laughs> you yeah of course all right guys uh, uh we, we're a little short on time so we'll let you go now but uh as usual like share subscribe abuse all of that stuff helps go ahead and do that we will see you next week with a special edition of meme review and until then stay happy stay